Thursday the 8th of September, the day the Queen died. This is the week surrounding the events from my perspective, as someone who lives in London age 23. It has been a crazy week, and here is how it all unfolded. Monday. Monday was a normal day. Life went on as normal and the Queen was not even on the horizon of anyone's agenda. I was filming a day in the life video which went up on Thursday, the actual day of the event. There was nothing major to report in London. It was only last week that I was in Hyde Park filming a video going around Buckingham Palace and the surrounding areas to which tourism was just normal. And there was not even a single hint that there would be any sort of royal family problems in the upcoming days. Tuesday. The Queen was due to meet our new Prime Minister Liz Truss to shake her hand in the ceremony by witches tradition where the Queen is the one who grants the Prime Minister all of the powers to run the government. The Queen did so and we saw multiple photos of her shaking hands with Liz Truss. Now other than seeing a few photos on social media of the Queen, there was nothing specifically unique about this day. To, to me it just seemed like business as usual and like many I just kind of took that the Queen was doing her job for granted. Now at this point there was no suspicion at all that there could be anything wrong with the Queen. But now some people may wonder why would you not expect anything at 96. We'll come to that later. Wednesday was calm before the storm. Now on this day, the Queen had moved back up to Balmoral and Balmoral is known to be her favourite home and place to stay, which is in Scotland. It is a stunning home. I think it's clear to see why anybody would want to reside there. And I think the attitude towards the royal family in general is different based on how old you are and it is ever changing. We're going to come to this later on towards the end of the video. But right now, we're going to move swiftly on to one of the biggest days in history for the UK. I was working up until about half 12 and when it came to lunchtime I remember looking at my phone and there was countless stories on Instagram about the Queen receiving medical treatment and at the time I thought you know what she's 96 of course she's gonna need medical treatment every now and then but about an hour later so about 1 30 there was another story by the same people that was being circulated and that was that the BBC, the national television channel in the UK, had completely changed its broadcasting schedule to focus solely on the Queen's health. And at that point, you know, I think for me, I was straight away in the situation of the Queen's either going to die today or she hasn't got long left. Then an hour later, again at about 2.30, another post comes out. The BBC presenters were changing into black dresses and black ties. I shouted out to my mate, black ties on. And I remember we looked at each other and it was like, if I'm still alive and you're changing into black ties, I'd be angry because you're just assuming I'm going to not make it. And then we got the announcement at half past three that Harry, William, the whole family were up to Balmoral, driving up express planes, private jets up to Scotland to see the Queen. At this point, there was still no official announcement, but crowds were starting to gather outside of Buckingham Palace. But it wasn't until 6.32 that the Queen was announced dead to the general public by the poster on and outside of Buckingham Palace on the gates. And then I think the biggest news story I've ever seen began to break out. A few moments ago, Buckingham Palace announced the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Andra, con le immagini, andiamo a Buckingham Palace, vediamo se riusciamo a mostrarvelo in diretta. Eccolo qua, Buckingham Palace, vediamo se non sbaglio la bandiera, eccola qui, a mezz'asta, è morta la regina Elisabetta II. Oh, I'm sorry, we, Arthur, we, we have to pause for a moment here. Uh, stay with us, we have got some breaking news. Uh, Sandra? The king, has, the queen has passed away. The queen died peacefully. The royal family says at Balmoral this afternoon. La reine Elizabeth II est morte à l'âge de 96 ans, dont 60. Königin Elizabeth II is tot. I went for a swim on Friday and the pool I normally go to during the day is filled up a lot with people I'd say in the category of over 60. However, for the first time ever of me going to this pool, when I was swimming, 
I was the only person in the pool and there were more lifeguards on duty than people in the pool and as I was swimming up and down doing my lengths the radio was on in the background keeping us updated with the situation with the Queen and the only songs they were playing was very very sad songs you know Lewis Capaldi emotional songs um, to obviously represent the mood of the Queen dying in the UK and I, I just thought it was interesting seeing that people above a certain age were really struck by this enough to the point where they wanted to stay inside and turn on the radio turn on the TV and listen to everything but for me personally I do much prefer the the celebration side of death so I would have rather have heard happy songs celebratory songs you know but it's definitely undeniable that with so much sadness in the media you can't help but feel more down and sadder than you normally would I guess even if you wasn't particularly attached to the Queen. And there were countless tributes as I was walking up and down the high street, walking around London, seeing all of these tributes towards the Queen. And it was clearly such a huge moment for UK history. And it was reflected everywhere you was going. And people weren't in the streets crying. People weren't super sad, you know. People got on with their day-to-day -day life because you know, very few people knew the Queen and very few people had such a big emotional connection towards the Queen. But there was a lot of respect being paid. Some events are cancelled today, some aren't. A lot of stuff is cancelled, which is causing a lot of controversy, but we're gonna go check out Buckingham Palace. We're gonna see how it is today. So today is Saturday. We're going to Buckingham Palace right now to see what the current vibe is like and football's been cancelled, a few other big events have been cancelled but then on the flip side there's no consistency so there's other big festivals that are going on. It's kind of up to each governing body's perspective. I think that you know the events are actually a time to celebrate the Queen. So for the last three days now there's been flowers consistently put out for the Queen by Buckingham Palace and across all the castles in the UK and landmarks in the UK. Today we're gonna to go see what Buckingham Palace is like. I think it's locked off more than normal, a lot more security. There is literally so many people here, I'm quite surprised. For a Saturday, I guess it's the first day when everyone can come, but thousands. They got like stewards here like it's a big event and loads of police. <laughs> so, so down there is where all the media is. That's where all the news reporters are from all over the world, giving reports with the background of Buckingham Palace. We haven't got any flowers, but we're gonna go see what it's like around here. It's like a bit of gridlock here, goodness me. It's like the tube. Wow, it's like the tube. I think it's a one-way system where if you want to lay flowers you go around that way I'm pretty yeah, sure yesterday but yeah yeah because we are yeah, not moving around here are we they should have signposts then to tell us what's going on All right guys, so I just went up to Buckingham Palace and when I tell you the queue to get uh, anywhere near the palace and to lay flowers is absolutely insane. Right now we're by a local floral garden where they've courted off a part of Hyde Park and you can go in there and lay flowers down. But I think from listening to people's conversations and I think that the people coming down to, to pay tribute are people who are coming for the history side of things, some people that genuinely cared about the Queen, some people coming because it's a big event. You know, there's a lot of reasons why people are coming because 
you know, it's a huge breaking story. And a lot of people in the UK do care about the Queen. And there's also some people that don't. And I think sometimes from the outside perspective, it makes it seem like everybody loves the royal family. And no one ever really has anything against the Queen personally. People just disagree with the royal family in general and the way that stuff is decided. I mean, you come down to Buckingham Palace, there are literally thousands and thousands of people. So trying, so trying to get anywhere near the front of the palace, which is normally super easy to do, is virtually impossible unless you want to queue up for hours. So we were just chatting to a lady who doesn't want to be in the video, but she was saying that the Buckingham Palace used to be white. She's lived in London her whole life, and now it's kind of gone very grey. So... <laughs> Obviously, this is the big vibe of the entire report. Oh, they were faking the uh, being interviewed for, uh, for a picture. But as you can see right here... And there's interviews being conducted all along the street, as you can see right here. Yeah. Now I imagine it will be like this for probably the next three, four days before it quietens down a bit, especially this weekend, it's going to be like this. And yesterday was like it. The first day where it happened on Thursday, I feel like there was no barriers, no security, because no one was expecting it and no one was prepared, basically. Today is Sunday. The whole UK focus on media day to day is still on the Queen. Um, currently, her body's being transported down from Scotland, where she died, through the UK. Charles is king officially. The funeral has been announced for September the 19th. And overall, the whole process is basically taking place and being fulfilled. And it's quite a long process. I think the Queen's body belongs to the state, for example. It doesn't belong to, to I guess, to her family. That is why she's going to be in, I believe, Westminster for a few days. There's, there's quite a lot of things happening in regards to the situation. There's still quite a lot of questions that you probably have. For example, when did she die officially? How did she die? Is the UK super sad? As well, firstly, I just want to say huge respect to the Queen. I think she did some incredible things during her time in office. Politically, like, is the royal family a good thing or a bad thing? I'm just neutral. So, firstly, let's talk about how did the Queen die. So, essentially, the royal family in the UK, they like to keep everything quite private. So, they like to keep, I guess, fairly so, you know. They like to keep the Queen's health outside of the public eye and stuff like that. So, it has said she died peacefully and there is the general consensus that she didn't die of any condition or diseases. She died of natural causes. What that natural cause is, will we ever find out? Will we ever know? Um, to be honest, it's unlikely. It could be one of the things that, you know, that I, there's no reason to do a, a post-mortem, for example. Um, stuff like that. So, yeah, natural causes seems to be the, the, the way that she died, unless anything gets revealed later on in life. When did she officially die? Now, this is another interesting question. Probably we'll find out what time she actually died later on. But right now, we go by the announcement, which is 6.31pm on Thursday. However, I believe it was the Prime Minister who found out at 4.30pm. And the media, as we said, were already wearing black ties doing XYZ before 4.30. So, if I had to guess what time, I would imagine the media would be the first ones to know about it. So, probably sometime before... Uh, four o'clock. Where did the Queen die? As we said, the Queen has multiple residencies all across the UK. Um, Balmoral is where she was residing when she died of natural causes. Who will be Queen after Queen Elizabeth? Obviously, now we now know that the, the King is what we now have, which is King Charles. Um, I basically, right now, I'm going through all of the questions that everybody seems to have and just answering them purely in case, in case you're not sure about what the answer is to some of these. So yeah, what, okay, so now let's move on to the general public's reaction. As I've said throughout this video, everybody's got a different perspective on the royal family. Everybody has a different level of gratitude and sadness towards the royal family. There's, for a base understanding, some people say, as you may have seen the controversial clip of Liv Trust being like, um, I have nothing against the Queen, but why is it that somebody gets born into such extreme power? Um, and quite a lot of people, I think, have that sort of argument. Another one is that why is it that the Queen is just born into wealth? Why does the royal family take taxpayer money to live by themselves and do X, Y, Z? Um, and it, it, it's arguments to go back and forth all of the time. For me, before I formed a full opinion, I'd have to look at, you know, how much value is the Queen, does the Queen bring in economically to justify how much money she receives from tax? It's just part of English culture and tradition that somebody has to get born into 
the royal family. It's been part of English culture for so long, it would be a shame to lose it. But again, I don't support the idea of somebody randomly having all this power by chance. But there's no other choice, you get me? And as well as this, there's also been a hell of a lot of memes circulating on Twitter, a lot of uh, frustration about certain political things and certain people in the royal family, as you would expect. Um, some of the memes, I mean some of them are just ridiculous. A few of the highlight ones have to be the scammers pretending to be Queen Elizabeth saying Hi, it's the Queen. I'm not dead, I'm kidnapped. I need £500 for the ransom. I am with Captain Tom, he is alive. Hi Tom here, I want to go for a walk. The scammers really be trying that hard and the memes really be coming out quite fast. But that's what you expect in today's political climate, no matter what the situation is, there's always going to be memes. Now, there's going to be a bank holiday on the day that the Queen has her funeral, where everything will be closed. But right now, it is time for a new week, a new work week, a new, a new beginning in the UK, where we have God Save the King instead of God Save the Queen. This is the first time it's happened in about 70 years that we've had a change of King or Queen. Which is why I think so many people are so attached to the Queen, because 99.9% .9 of people live till 96 or below. There's only 0.001% of people in the UK who are actually older than the Queen and therefore have lived in a period of time when the, the Queen Elizabeth II hasn't been there. Everybody else, and the majority of people in the UK, have always had her there. And I think that's why, again, even if you're not a huge supporter of the royal family, you still feel a bit moved by the Queen dying because it's like someone you've had there your whole entire life. But again, I'm politically neutral. I don't talk about politics. I, I always say, listen, politics is not my calling. I'm just here to, to pay respects, document the ride, and I'll be making a video on the funeral very soon in London. I, I'm all about London culture. So thank you very much for watching. Take care, subscribe, and let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. All up in my head, that's how I behave. Passing up the same, waking up the same. All up in my head, that's just how I behave.